Hi everyone, this is a video to celebrate uh, the first 30,000 subscribers on the channel. Um, and as last time when we hit 20,000, um, I'm going to do something that has been asked for for quite a long time. So last time we did this uh, all uh, I eat in a day video. Um, and this video is actually kind of connected to that one. Um, this is a video on the supplements that I take and why I take them. So I'm going to describe here what kind of supplements I have taken, you know, over the last few years, why I take these. Um, and the reason that I'm saying that this is connected to um, the last video is because um, supplements lately, since I did that, um, you know, all I eat in a day video, have been a pretty um, polarizing topic uh, on my channel because um, basically a lot of people have been theorizing that um, because I take a lot of supplements that is related to my vegan diet and that means that you can't be strong on a vegan diet because you know here you see Patrick Baboumian has to take a shitload of supplements and I've got the most ridiculous comments on that um, so I thought I address this in this first video so first of all the, the idea of this is that we're gonna make a series of videos because um, the topic of supplements is just so you know there are such a lot of supplements that if I would basically address every single sub, uh, supplement in one video we would get a monstrous video of I don't know probably two hours or so and nobody wants to watch that so we're gonna make a quick one now where I'm gonna just you know basically address a few basic topics on why I take supplements and if it's related to my vegan diet or not. Spoiler alert, it's not. <laughs> um, and uh, then in the next videos, we're going to, you know, one by one uh, dissect every single supplement and uh, just say, you know, basically find pros and cons if you should take them or why I take them um, and um, if they're helpful and for what they're good for, basically. So let's get back to this topic of, um, you know, the, the idea that um, the supplements that I take, which is actually, a, you know, a, a big array of things uh, that I take every day, um, that they're specifically connected to me being vegan. That's not the case. So that's not the case for some, I can basically prove it with several facts. So fact number one is I have taken the same supplements when I was a meat eater. So most of the supplements that I take now, I have taken basically for, you know, the last 20 years or longer. Now, fact number two, and this one is a actual proof because, you know, I can't prove to you that I have taken these same things. But what I can prove is that other meat eating strongmen, and I'm talking about the top guys like, you know, after Bjornsson or Brian Shaw or um, other top strongmen, they have YouTube channels too. So if you go and check out their channels um, and you check out their, um, you know, uh, what I eat in a day videos that they have, um, you're going to see that um, they're basically taking the same things, more or less. So uh, first of all, they're taking the same things. And then second of all, they are taking a shitload of supplements too. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to go and say that's because they eat meat because, you know, that would be very stupid. Um, it's not connected to the diet. The reason that I was taking the same things when I was eating meat and these guys are taking the same things is because it is not connected to the diet, but it's connected to the sport. Um, and um, the, the logic behind that is that if you do such a demanding sport like, uh, like Strongman is, you just basically have to give your body much more of all the micronutrients, much more of uh, the macros than you can really eat with normal food. So you want to, because you want to optimize as much as you can basically um, to make sure that you get the best outcome out of your body. Now, um, I'm retired, so today um, the supplements are actually not as much, you know, as, as much a part of my diet as they used to be. But in this video, I have purposefully um, kind of, you know, showed more supplements than I really take every day uh, because I wanted to show how uh, an, a full day of eating would look like if I would compete. That's the next thing that a lot of people didn't understand that, you know, it, I'm not really eating that way every day. My goal was to show you how I would do it if I was still competing. Um, so that's 
just addressing that video and uh, all the bullshit that was uh, going around it. Um, let's now get into you know why specifically um, I take most of the supplements. Um, I think it would be a good idea to just go through the list now um, and then I'm gonna probably address one of the supplements in this video and then in the next video we're going to just basically go through that whole list. So it starts with calcium and calcium is something that I have supplemented for I don't know probably 20 years. Um, and the reason I have supplemented calcium is not to make sure that um, that I get enough calcium. Um, it was because I was trying to basically time my calcium intake and my magnesium intake in a way that I would have a huge load of uh, calcium before training and then a huge load of uh, magnesium after training. And that has some, you know, the logic behind that is um, calcium is, um, is a part of uh, your, your muscle's ability to uh, contract. So basically um, a muscle contraction is um, the, the signal for that from nerve to muscle fiber is basically transported through the uh, calcium channels in, uh, in your nerves. But that was the reason I was doing it was that I thought if you, you know, load calcium before training, that gives you the, uh, the um, ability to contract harder. And that would mean that you basically can lift more. So it was kind of like trying to use calcium as a uh, pre-workout booster, basically. Um, and I have, and, and then with the, ma uh, with the magnesium, um, I was just basically um, trying to have the magnesium after training because magnesium has more or less um, the opposite effect. So magnesium is taking away mus uh, muscle um, tonus. So it makes your, you know, it, it just basically puts you into a recovery state, which means that your muscles are not as tense um, if you have a lot of magnesium. If you have, you know, huge lots uh, of it, um, what's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually make you tired. And that can have benefits. Uh, it also has, um, it also has anti-inflammatory uh, properties. So um, it makes you, whole lot of sense to take it after training or take it for instance before you go to sleep so that was the reason why I was you know timing it that way I'm still doing that thing with magnesium and I think it's interesting if you you know follow this logic what you basically see is that you know me doing that thing with calcium and magnesium has nothing to do with my diet it has nothing to do with me thinking oh I'm not going to get enough calcium or magnesium in my diet no this is me trying to manipulate things so that my, I can get, I can basically squeeze out more performance out of my body. Has really shit to do with the diet. Absolutely nothing. Um, so I hope that, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, people who commented um, and, and, and kind of try to celebrate uh, the supplements being, um, you know, a proof of the vegan diet being deficient. Uh, I hope they feel really stupid now. Really hope that <laughs> uh, because because it, it is a very stupid argument. It's, it has nothing to do with reality. So most of the supplements that I take are ways you know where I try to manipulate something in the body to make the body more uh, you know basically get more performance out of the body than you can do with a normal diet. Um, and as I said, other athletes they do the same thing. Uh, it's, it has nothing to do with your with your diet. The supplements are a completely different channel with which you try to get an outcome out of your body. The diet is one thing, is one column, so to say, and then the supplements are another column where you try to manipulate your body to, you know, deliver the outcome that you want as an athlete. Okay, so let's get back to the calcium. So um, I stopped taking the calcium because um, I. Uh, a few months ago, basically, um, I um, um, started thinking that the calcium might have something to do with an injury that I had. Um, and I'm talking about uh, um, a tear to my um, tricep tendon that I had in 2016, uh, basically on my last competition. Uh, and that injury actually uh, more or less retired me. I was actually planning to retire anyway, but uh, then the, the injury just sealed the deal basically for me. Um, it was at the World Championships in, uh, in the log lift 
um, in Lithuania and um, the tear was basically um, the, um, the, the outcome of a chronic uh, in, uh, tendonitis that I had for, um, for a few years basically um, in both of my um, tricep tendons. Uh, and I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. So I went to the best doctor that, that I know in, in the field um, and I basically asked him uh, what, what I could do to get rid of the tendonitis. Uh, and he just basically said, well, did, you know, you can do some things, but none of them will really cure it. So um, what you basically have to do is you have to wait until it tears and then you can come and I'm going to fix it. And that's exactly what happened. So um, the, the way it went down was that um, I was preparing for the, the log lift competition. Um, and then one week before the competition, I actually had a minor uh, tear to my pec. Um, so minor pec tear. Um, and I made the decision to just stop training for a week until the competition. Uh, and then just basically you know, try to go anyway and, 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 and see what I can, you know, if, if I could still uh, compete. Uh, that's what I did. Um, and to make up for the pack tear, I just basically tried to use more tricep. Um, that was a stupid thing to do. So the outcome was that in my second attempt, um, it was 180 kilos. I almost had the thing locked out. Um, and then my arm just snapped and my tricep tendon just, uh, just, just, I, I just, tore my tricep there um, and I now have the theory that the, me using calcium as a um, as a tr you know workout booster basically um, for years and probably overdosing calcium for years had something to do with the problem there now what you have to know is that calcium and magnesium are kind of antagonists so that means um, you know, if you take them both, um, they're competing for the same pathway to basically get uh, absorbed. So it, um, you know, either you have to take a certain ratio of both if you take them together, or you should uh, just take them at different times. So I was doing that by taking calcium before training and then magnesium after training. The idea is that the calcium just basically gives you the ability to uh, contract harder, and then the magnesium uh, gives you the ability to get rid of that muscle tension after training and put the muscle into a recovery state where you can recover you know, faster from the training. At least that's the theory um, uh, with which I was working. So now where, you know, where I was at the point where I wanted to kind of make up for that calcium overdose over years, um, I also had the idea to use magnesium for that. So what I basically did is that I just um, upped the dose of my magnesium and just completely left out the calcium that I was taking. And uh, I just wanted to see, you know, it was just an experiment basically to see if it would help because uh, somebody also told me, uh, and that was actually what, what you know, pushed me to, to do this. Uh, and this is why these videos are so great because you guys give me feedback and then I'm able to learn out of that feedback after, you know, 26 years. Um, of, of, of uh, training myself and, and basically studying uh, nutrition and studying supplements and studying everything that I can use to, you know, improve my training, I'm still learning. So, um, you know, one of you guys just said in, in a comment that um, magnesium can be used to uh, fight inflammation. So I thought, well, this is a great idea. Let's just up the dose and, and see if, uh, if, if it really does that. And what should I say? What happened is um, within a few weeks, I actually got rid of the tendonitis. So on the right side, I would, you know, have it all the time. Every time that, that I would contract or I would do uh, a tricep uh, exercise, I would always feel the tendon. It was always, it would always burn and uh, I could feel that there was inflammation in the tendon. And that's gone now for the first time in, in years. Um, so, you know, I have mixed feelings here because on the one hand, I kind of, you know, I'm happy that I found something with which I can, you know, um, kind of um, treat the tendonitis and, and, and um, uh, get it to, to a point where, where I might be able to, to train tricep like really heavy again. 
which is awesome for me because tricep, my tricep used to be uh, one of my, you know, strongest muscles. My shoulders and my tricep were basically my, you know, my, my uh, strongest muscles. And, and that was the reason that I was, that I had a pretty good um, log lift um, throughout my career. Um, and I lost that after, after the injury because, you know, basically, you know, the, even after the surgery, um, the, the arm is not, you know, the tendon is not 100% of what it used to be. And then the, the tendonitis itself just forces me to hold back because, um, you know, I got to um, be, be careful that I don't have another injury to, to, to the tricep. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is um, just basically to warn you to um, really consider um, if, you know, if you are someone who uses calcium in that way or who just supplements calcium and uh, uh, doesn't really, um, you know, basically make sure if you need the calcium or not and probably overdoses it, be careful because it, it can really do damage to your body. Um, it, it definitely did for me. I can feel that I'm getting much better um, after getting rid of it. And uh, at the same time, magnesium could be something interesting if you are, you know, um, um, fighting with a tendonitis yourself, uh, you might want to give magnesium a chance and, and, and see if it can actually help you too. It, it tremendously helped me. So, um, so that's basically, uh, you know, covering magnesium and, and, and calcium at this point. Um, and I'm now just going to quickly go through the list uh, of all the other supplements that I take. Um, and the idea is that uh, in the next few weeks, I'm going to, you know, one by one uh, do videos on all these different supplements. And then I'm going to explain why I take these different uh, supplements and, um, and how they work and what, uh, um, you know, what the pros and cons are, like with uh, calcium, you know. Um, you can work with it, but it, it might actually do damage too. So that that um, also um, goes for other supplements. Like um, the next one is going to be iron, and iron is a perfect example. If you um, are deficient in iron, iron, an iron supplement makes sense. Um, but you should always check your iron because you know if you do too much of it, it can you know it can do damage. So. Um, so iron is going to be the next one, then zinc. We might also do iron and zinc in one video, we'll see. Uh, multi multivitamin um, is going to be one. Creatine, protein supplements. So I'm talking about protein powder here. Uh, beta alanine, uh, EAAs and BCAAs. Um, nutritional yeast, turmeric, cinnamon, dried fruits, veggies and greens. I use those too. Uh, bromelain, B12. I might put B12 at a higher, um, um, you know, a little bit early on in the list uh, because B12 is an interesting one. Um, it comes up a lot uh, in, you know, in conjunction with, uh, with, with veganism um, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, um, stuff to unravel there too. So B12 is going to be an important one and then omega-3s. That's the last one in my list. So that's basically the list of supplements that we're going to um, that we're going to cover in the next videos. Like, really looking forward to that. But in the very next video, which is going to probably come out uh, as soon as tomorrow, um, I'm going to address something else. Um, and uh, this is something that has recently happened just a few days ago. I've been called out by uh, Brian Shaw, who you might know is uh, a four-time World's Strongest Man, um, has won the Arnold a bunch of times, and has been, I, in, in, in my eyes, one of the most dominant, or if not the most dominant, strongman in the last decade, basically. I, I would definitely put him in the top three together with Thor and with um, Big Z. So um, he um, just basically invited me to challenge him in any lift, uh, and said he would easily beat me. So um, this is something that really excited me. Um, now, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm retired for three years now. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, kind of bad timing, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to address this whole thing in the next video and uh, you're going to see uh, the angle that I'm taking at it. Um, spoiler alert, I'm definitely not going to say no um, if Brian Shaw 
um, challenges me. So, um, but that's all I'm going to say. Now uh, you're going to probably have that video by tomorrow and uh, you can look forward to something entertaining.